Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Stab a Panda. Stab a Panda plays from three to about seven players, but you could probably play more if you wanted to. And the game revolves around choices. Your choices, as well as everyone else guessing what your choices might be in certain situations. The main idea of the game is you're going to get four cards in front of you when you are the panda, and you are going to then choose from the greatest likelihood of you doing the thing to least likelihood of you doing the thing. Cards like you must eat your best friend to survive, or fart every single time you talk, confess to a crime you didn't commit, or even spend six hours as a puddle of goo a day. Now, because the cards are kind of left open-ended, you guys can discuss it amongst yourself as a group as to what's going to be worse, or how the rules are going to facilitate each and every card, but the idea is pretty simple. Players are going to draw the cards, they're not the panda, they're going to select cards up to the number of four cards, place them down on the table face up, to which you, the panda, will then decide from greatest to least which cards you'll likely do to not likely do. You'll be having cards in your hand that look like this with numbers on them that say, yes, absolutely. Don't make me. I could, or nope. And then you're going to put them down face down. Everyone else is then going to mimic you by putting their cards face down that facilitate the same exact idea as these cards. You're going to flip over simultaneously, and whoever scores uh, the most alike cards as you have in the correct order will score points. The next panda will go through, and the game will continue. Let me show you what you get. All right, so here we have Stab Panda. And as you can see, everybody is going to get their own unique color of cards. There's four of them, and they range from one to four, absolutely to nope. You're also going to get two separate decks of cards. There's the family-friendly version, which is going to come with cards like, oh, I don't know, get into a knife fight with a panda. Two cards that are a little more risque, where you invite all of your friends or ex-girlfriends ex, 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 uh, to play strip poker. And there's more, even more in here as well. These ones over here are going to be your little tokens, which you're going to have for each player. And you're going to set it down right offside the track here, and there's a scoreboard from 1 to 20 points. As you score throughout the game, you're going to go down this track, and if you score enough points, you're going to start back over again and tally them up with the points you had previously gotten. But that is the main idea of what you're getting in the game, along with a box and a rule book. So, on a turn of Stab a Panda, it's pretty simple. If you're playing with three players, one person's going to be the panda, and the other two are going to be the people that are going to grab the cards. They're going to take four cards apiece and choose two of them, set them down in front of the panda, flip them over, and then the panda will do his thing. If you're playing with more players, then it's going to be the next two players that draw two. If it plays with five players, each player will draw two and choose one of them. So you're always going to have four cards in front of the panda so that the panda will choose between the four cards that he has, the one, two, four, and make his order up as he decides. So it's kind of like a make your own choice. It's instead of never would I ever, it's never have I ever or never would I ever want to do this specific thing. So that is the idea, right? And you're going to score points. Now how points works is pretty simple too. For every correct answer you get, you're going to get a point. So the guessers are going to score either one, two, or four points. Never three though, because if you got all three right, you're going to get the fourth one as well. However, the panda will score one point for every single person who gets his order correct. So in a big player game, like a six player game, if five people guess all of his order correctly, he'll score five points in that aspect. The lower, lower games though, it's less likely the panda's going to score a lot of points. And after the panda's turn is done, it'll move to the next panda. I'll show you how a turn of play is and we'll talk about some of the cards. Okay, so we're back to Stab a Panda, and as you can see, each player has their own unique set of four cards that all represent the numbers one through four. These are going to be the non-pandas, and these are going to, this is going to be the panda. You also have the same color associated with the cards on the score tracker over here, starting at the uh, zero marker. Each player is then going to get four cards that isn't the panda, so one, two, three, and four cards. And then they're going to look at the cards. In this case, uh, there's going to be two cards chosen per player. So maybe he'll choose this one and he'll choose this one. These cards he will be discarded. And this player over here will also select two. Okay, I'll pick this one and this one. And these will also be discarded. Now they're going to set these up and put them in front of the player, the panda player. And as you can see here, we've got Race a Great White Shark. We have William, Sh have William Shatner conduct your wedding, lying in a bathtub full of maggots, and never playing or don't play video games for an entire year. The panda is going to secretly decide between these in the order he would like these things done to him or have happen. And so he's going to go ahead and just select them. One, two three, and four, as what he's selected as the panda. And these players are also going to try and guess as well. One, two, ooh, actually, it was two, three, and four. And this player will do the same. And each of them are going to be guessing on their own accord. 
And once all the players have guessed just like this, everyone is going to reveal at the same time, determining the order of the panda player, as well as determining the order of all of the guessers. And if they all get them all correct in order, then they're going to be in good shape. But it doesn't look like they did this time. So as you can see here, this one is the four, which is the nope card. And so this one and this one are the same. So this one's going to go. This is a one. So this one's going to go. Two, neither of these. And then three, this one is a no. In which case, they would then have one point, two points for green and one point for orange. One, two, and one for orange. Because neither player guessed the full amount of the exact, um, white, white's exact order, white does not go up. But if they had, white would have gotten a point per player. And then as you can see, you can look at the order. So he actually chose have William Shatner connect his wedding first, then lie in the bathtub, then deal with the no video games, and finally racing a great white shark, which is basically death, right? <laughs> Other players might not like it so much, but he, he knew it was up, orange knew it was up. So then the next round would begin. You would give out the cards back to the players. So this would go to green, this would go back to orange, and this would go back to white. These cards would get discarded, and the next player is then going to be the panda. So we'll have green be the panda this time. And then he, he would deal out four cards to white and four cards to orange, and then um, he would have them deal two cards out to choose which ones and discard the rest, and the order would continue. Now Green would be trying to do this, and he would look at these new options here. Be trapped in a Japanese horror movie, only travel places on a Segway, smash a friend's phone, and stand right behind a stranger, sighing constantly. Okay, so that is the idea of the game, right? As you play the game, you're gonna score points and go on until everybody has been the panda at least once. The person with the most amount of points is the winner. Okay, so the question is, what do I think about stab a panda? Well, first of all, it's not like would you rather because instead you get to order the cards into your liking and you have the option between one through four. Now, sometimes you're gonna get bad choices because you're gonna to wanna to do neither of them. And sometimes most of the, most of the uh, scary things like racing a shark or jumping off of a cliff, those things are going to result in death. So death and death are kind of the same. I guess it's just how you want to go out. But they have unique replayability. This is going to be played differently between everybody. And at first I thought it was going to be a, a guessing game or like a judging game in which players are going to get the cards and you know like cards against humanity that kind of thing and i kind of seen that's kind of getting old now it's going to get replayed but this is kind of fresh this is new in fact it's going to give you that ability to kind of branch out with different people some people won't mind wearing fur coats so if you have to wear a fur coat all the time that's not gonna be a big deal but other people that mainly like vegans or people that are interested in like the full-on animal rights people they're gonna be more like oh no 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 like i would never want to do that some people are less squeamish and they don't mind being in a bathtub full of maggots while others would never do that they'd rather jump off a cliff so that has that interesting aspect you get to know your friends you get to learn about the people around you it's not just picking the most funny it's picking the order you think your friends are going to associate with each card and having everybody have that option. Really, really cool. I really like that idea. The art is pretty cool. It's kind of like this funky, weird style of like cartoon art. It reminds me of the stuff I used to watch in the 90s. So I do like that aspect of it. And always watching all the pandas get into their interesting, unique, <laughs> their unique poses, licking a cat's butt. And it's just the panda staring at the cat while the cat's like, eh? <laughs> or, or climb Mount Everest. And you see the little panda on top of Mount Everest. The game's called Stab a Panda because it's something you probably wouldn't want to do, right? But you have to make that choice. Put it in that order. Go on a date with the ex of the person on your right. Or only dress in animal skins or furs, like I said. Expose yourself in public. Constantly fart and never get to poop again. <laughs> Frame a panda for murder. Fart every single time you talk. You must eat your best friend to survive. Use hot bacon as healing salve. <sighs> now that's not it too, though. The game also comes with some more risque uh, style cards that can be a little more interesting. Uh, if, you, if you don't mind that little added aspect to it, like inviting all of your exes to play strip poker, being somebody who cleans up after a shoot in a movie, <laughs> uh, play hide the salami, the food, with a person on your right, um, get, getting on with a clown. <laughs> and so on and so forth. They get a little more detailed with that. So if you like that aspect, it's, it works really well as a family game because all the cards in here are very family friendly. There's only a couple of them that are a little more like mm, not having sex 
sex for like a year or something like that. That's probably like, the worst thing in here. But then if you want to play more of like a college steam game, it works really well to add the other cards in. For me, I personally enjoyed all the cards. It was a lot of fun to just get to know the people around you and see what they liked and what they didn't like, or at least what they really hated compared to what they just hated. All overall though, the game was super fun. I really encourage you guys to check it out if you like these kind of like judging games. If you're the kind of person that go to parties and play Never Have I Ever with your fingers up, this is exactly the game for that party because it gives people that don't know what to think about as far as like what to say it has these written on there already and you get to just choose them really fun really enjoyable make sure to sleeve them if you're having a drink though all right that's all i got for you thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer kickstarter card game review if you like this video go and check out our videos can you do like subscribe and comment it all helps like subscribe comment also check out stab a panda it'll be on kickstarter as well as checking out our website unfiltered gamer got tons of good stuff on there as well as checking out our affiliates everythingboardgames.com the giveaway geek and and Ferdinand, the Cardboard Stacker. Three great people with giveaways and a bunch of blogs. Hi right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to not stabbing a panda.